Hi, comic book readers, and welcome to another live episode of Off the Rack, unless you're catching the show after the fact, in which case we do appreciate watching it anyway, but uh, this is a comic book show where we take comic books in the past week and we talk about them and recommend comics that are coming out this week, and we do all kinds of other stuff. We talk about the news, yeah. and we have a comic book of the week. We have one of yeah. our picks of the week that we kind of like isolate and go, this is the book we think is a standout sure. uh, of the week, and uh, you know, sometimes we have lighter weeks than others, and so as a result, we have like an odder selection. I think that's kind of fun. It makes the uh, segment a little more interesting interesting especially when we remember to do it ah, but uh i try to i've been really good about you reminding been. you but uh, i want to thank everybody for watching uh don't forget to uh sponsor today's show by using super chats ask a question or comment we'll read it here on the show and it'll be read for posterity forever it'll be on the show forever mm -hmm. and uh the proceeds of which will go to support the infrastructure that makes comic pop possible of course if you uh, don't like that whole system and you want to help out comic pop in any more uh, any other more direct way you can always go to patreon.com slash comic pop and help us out more directly there keeps the channels afloat i will i will tell you that uh, this past year patreon uh, it didn't it didn't outperform the ad revenue from the main channel, but it was also like it, it helped when there were really low months for sure uh, during, you know, seasons because like YouTube sure. used to be like, oh, this is how like this is the cold season <laughs> when mm -hmm, it comes to like mm -hmm. how things are going uh, now. Like, oh, is it a day that ends in why? Well, then it's probably a bad time to be a YouTuber. And it's like, oh, cool. Um, it's one of the things they don't tell you about when your favorite YouTubers are coming out going like hey yeah i'm retiring to spend more time with my family also it's unsustainable for me to unsustainable for me to do this but i won't tell you that but uh no patreon's a huge help so uh if you want to help out sure. go there and you know we appreciate it yeah, but either yeah. way uh the best way to do it to help us out is by watching the show yeah absolutely which is what we're doing today you. so uh a lot of uh we, we, we were really thrilled to talk about the news from last week. This week, um, instead of there being any particular topic, I will say that there was a there's more of like a like a controversial thing that came up uh, with respect to Batman 143. There were a lot of accusations on social media. They're not oh, worth any of they're them. not worth getting okay. into, honestly, but they might come up when we talk about okay. Batman 143 Prepared. Uh, because Prepared. I was like, you don't know what you're I don't think you know what you're talking about, folks, like not you guys, but like folks who are like. I want to take this artist down a peg or two. Uh, and I don't know. And, I, and I'm hearing buzzwords like AI. And I'm going to accuse artists of just using AI to make comic books. And I'm like, if you want to accuse artists of doing anything in comic books, you know, talk about the tracers. But uh, let's talk about books that are coming out. Uh, before that, in terms of news, we did yeah, see that we got the trailer for uh, X-Men 97, which we saw yes. that dropped yes, uh, before it comes out very, very soon. And, uh, yeah, there were a lot of interesting thoughts and feelings about this. Um, not as, you know what? No. Overall, there were a lot of positive comments about X-Men 97's return. Yeah. And more specifically, the animation and, and the trailer that they dropped uh, talking about it. So mm -hmm. that, that's pretty exciting. Uh, but but you're, you're here to hear our opinion. So, Tiffany, what did you think of the trailer for X-Men 97? I mean... I enjoyed it, right? And um, I, I think it's like you, you know, there's nothing that's ever going to recapture your mind's eye of what you remember something being like, especially if you watched it if you were like a little kid mm -hmm. or like saw it like later on or whatever. But typically, you probably watch this for the first time at a younger age, regardless of how and when, what year it was that you saw it, right? Yeah. And um, like they're fighting an uphill battle for for particularly for that, right? Um, because it's like you're trying to recapture the style of it while also making it look like what people remember it looking yes. like. Um, and then also, you know, when this was coming out, it, it was really ca hitting on that Jim Lee era of of X Men, and there's been a lot of different eras since, since then. Um, so it's like, do you continue with that? Do you do you go somewhere else? Like, what are you going to bring into this into this you know storytelling? Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for it. Right. Um, I do feel like you know I appreciate they got some of the voice actors back. It's a, it's a little for me like um, the voice actors for Sailor Moon wanting to come back to do Sailor Moon. Like I appreciate it, but I can you can hear the fact that time time has passed on. It's, yeah. Right. It's, it's different. Um, I don't think it's enough for me to go like, ew, no. No, no, no. Um, I'm still going to watch it, and I'm still excited to to have it. And um, you know, it, it, it's just it's, I'm that I'm that person who is always like, oh, like I'll say like, oh, I wish we had this, or I wish we had more, or what if, what if, what if. But sometimes I don't really like 
actually want it to come into being. I'm not saying this shouldn't come into being, but mm -hmm. like, you know, we'll see. And I hope people enjoy it. And I hope that there's something um, that people like find charming about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how the original X-Men animated series obviously was such a, you know, it, it hit at the height uh, and it, it came upon the scene kind of as a, a little bit of a dark horse, um, you know, not too long before that had they done an X-Men pilot that was much more in the style of like 80s cartoons that had come before um, in the in the form of the Pride of the X-Men. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, they were working with people from like G.I. Joe and so forth um, from the presentation to the art style. It was like, oh, that is that is not what X-Men is currently. And uh, and then so they went with it. Now, obviously, for a number of reasons, they went in another direction and X-Men, um, the original animated series from the 90s. Um, it delivered on a lot of uh, unexpected hype and mm -hmm. a lot of like people who knew were like, well, yeah, of course. And people who like, I want to say that X-Men, the animated series did more to create X-Men fans than any other piece of media that has ever existed. Um, which includes the comic books, unfortunately, like comic book fans love X-Men, mm -hmm. but non comic book readers love X-Men by and large because of that animated series oh, at least yeah. those of a certain age bracket and uh and yeah I, I i i i understand but i'm also puzzled by marvel's reliance on this you know x-men 97 is like it's a mood for marvel yeah they are doing it up the x-men 97 action figures are huge those are the x-men that like hasbro is presenting for Marvel, it's not just all the them. Mondo's making them. As Mondo well. is making X Men '97 uh, toys and and, and pieces of iconography. Not only that, you got like X Men '97 themed Lego sets. You've got X Men '97 themed merchandising. Like, yeah. and of course, you know Wolverine's back in his X Men '97 outfit. It's not really the X Men '97. It's just his blue mm -hmm. and yellow suit, but it is the suit he wore also in X Men '97. You can see like the parallels and the kind of like Marvel's clearly like telegraphing this. To, down to the fact that Deadpool and Wolverine, the movie, he's wearing the yellow and blue. Like, right, right, right. I feel this kind of like synergy going on mm -hmm. with Marvel, where they're like, "This is the, this is it. Like, this is the X Men. If we need to own an X Men, this is the one we're going to put front and center. And we're putting a lot of eggs into the basket of this animated series, which, like, I appreciate. Number one, it needs to be great." That, that no, first and foremost, this show needs to deliver across the board in a way that the original show kind of didn't. Like, yeah. and I'm not because I think the show, the original show is it, it's a phenomenon, but it has its moments where it's like it is a traditional Fox Kids animated show. You know, like it, it's an it is unexpectedly accurate or condensed and compartmentalized adaptations of classic X Men comic books mm -hmm. like in, in ways that are very very rare in comic book media adaptation um but it's also a 22 minute animated show for children right, right. and so it has those, those hallmarks which you know it's it's not always gonna be what you remember you know going back and revisiting it i'm like some of these are really cool and unexpectedly like uh evergreen mm -hmm. others you know they, they're not as they're not strong uh but they had an effect when they came out and they have created the, this like fervent amount of uh, fandom that has, you know, come back to the brand time and time again, or at the very least, like identifies as a as a fan mm. because of it. And and so that can't be understated. It's just like, but 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 they're they're older, you know. I don't. I, when the X Men animated series came out on Disney Plus, I did not hear a lot of new fans being made because the show was readily available. You know, it was more that people watched it again yeah. and maybe people found it just as cool or maybe pretty cool as they did when they were kids. Yeah. yeah and that's yeah. wonderful. I assume that based on how hard Marvel's leaning into this brand specifically mm -hmm. uh, to, to the point where freaking, what was it? Uh, it Dr. Strange two features the animated series chair for Doc, yes. for professor X. Yes, it does. Like, yep. They, they were like, we are only going to show you, the stuff that you may have seen in the cartoon you watched from forever ago. Right. 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 And it's like, I, 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 but I'm, but I'm guessing that the numbers for like the views on that show were just insane to the point where they can't ignore it, you know, right. because like, here's what they didn't do. They didn't go all in on Spider-Man 94. They didn't go all in on gargoyles. 
you know, they they were already making a DuckTales cartoon show. So it's not like, oh, the views on DuckTales are amazing. Let's make a new show. No, DuckTales had already like cemented itself in the in the pop culture, you know, mindset. And mm-hmm. so they were like, well, let's make a new uh, DuckTales show, you know. But like, I have not seen Disney slash Marvel lean into anything more hard and fast than the X-Men animated series from the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this trailer is having an effect that I think is really positive. I'm surprised that it hasn't gotten all memed out like there it, it, it hasn't really presented a lot of like character moments but right. we did get at least one big moment that like was clearly the takeaway and it was a moment that i went oh, that's pretty cool people lost their effing minds really? and it was gambit charging wolverine's claws oh. in action admittedly i was like you I also ne- you I fell was, for it you were like Ooh, that's I, was, cool. I never thought about that and then i was like wait a minute wouldn't, wouldn't charge he, his whole body yeah, wouldn't he die yeah that's why he doesn't do it in the wouldn't, comics wouldn't it like wouldn't his skeleton just blast out of his body yeah which admittedly like he could do i mean like you know wolverines could survive that, that would be a thing he could do but uh but i can understand how in a cartoon show it's like that no, he charges the car he charges the claws and then wolverine like throws the charge or his claws have energy around them that explodes however they do it in the in in cartoon form it's easier to kind of go yeah it's it's just cool and fun but fewer people than i expect are asking those kinds of questions they're kind of just going like whoa and i'm like so it has an effect it's not just i love x-men from that time period i want to see that Mm -hmm. you know it's just it's just cool moments that uh that, that also, uh, I think, honor the spirit of the old show. The, the exactly. voices that we did get a sample of uh, were fine. They weren't uh, bad in any way. No, no. You oh. could just hear that time had passed. Yeah, except for Cyclops. So unfortunately, the actor for Cyclops passed away. But the dude who's uh, doing Cyclops now, honoring that legacy, dude, like, nailing it. Yeah. I was really worried. And he was he yeah, immediately nailed job. it. And got the To Me, My X-Men line in there, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, Cal Dodd sounds a little older, which is a shame. But uh it was one line, so I'm sure he sounds fine. I've heard him do interviews, and I've heard him do like fan films as Wolverine. He sounded mm-hmm. just fine, so I, I think that'd be cool. Um, a lot of different uh, ideas here. Obviously, you know, in the image we showed, Jean is pregnant. That's interesting. Uh, Morph mm-hmm. looks more like his Exiles counterpart, rather yeah, than his, like, how, uh, what, like, are we going to explain that? Uh, maybe it's a secondary mutation. Maybe okay. it's just that he wears a mask. I, I assume it's maybe he just likes this look. Yeah, I think it's more the former. I think, or it's maybe just, he's like, this is what I actually look like. Yeah, what you saw was what I right what i presented yeah i wanted to fit in yeah i'd be very okay with that right Uh, i like that a lot because i always loved the look of of comic book morph Mm -hmm. and i was always confused because comic book morph like he had a big cape and and an insane outfit in the exiles and i remember being like is he the same thing as the animated series like i don't know the difference and so uh yeah i like the idea that he's just like no that's what i that's my my neutral state yeah i'm I'm, i look like this yes Um, but it's it's cool that we got him um uh, the other thing that I really enjoyed, and it's very much just a, a, a me thing, was there was an image of the Daily Bugle, and, and I was like, were "Oh, like, you were yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah!" It's all like it's in there because I think the Daily Bugle appeared, you know, in like scraps of paper and so forth. It wasn't like sure. Ed Asner's J. Jonah Jameson did anything on the show, but uh, you know, seeing that it's part of a larger Marvel universe, mm-hmm. like I could see, you know, people like me hemming and hawing or whinging, being like, "Why don't you just put?" everything back i want to just put it all in like get, you know pay whatever it costs and get marvel whole again it feels like what you know when it comes to spider-man it's like eh, we got time mm. and each movie makes a billion either way who cares whereas x-men they're like get it all in order get it mm. all f- clean get it all into one place i don't want anything missing um and and so yeah I- i'm i'm excited for it i'm yeah. just kind of like it's not enough for me to really judge at this point the animation seems uh, like it's it looks better than like the Christ and Infinite Earths movie, which you uh, aptly described as looking like the early seasons of the Venture Brothers. And I was like, yeah, I'll never unsee that. Sorry. It does. No, <laughs> I, I mean, it does. It looks it looks weird and it looks suspiciously inexpensive. Uh, this does not. This, But it does still look like that thing. Like Disney could have easily outsourced this to like an anime studio or to some beautiful like, you know, Western based animation studio that does like really, really cool experimental art they could have done something from like the love and robots teams sure or any from one from star wars visions you know disney has access to some of the largest animation groups in the world they are and uh, yet uh, it, it looks uh, inexpensive well i least. mean like it, it's allowed to it's meant to look 
it's supposed to really it's supposed to evoke a style and it's of the supposed time to be a continuation of a season that we never got right well we got that uh and that's the weird thing is that like it looks more like the last season of the show which arguably looks worse than any other yes. episode of the show like the show had one particular look and then it, ch it changed and they changed that style in part to save money mm -hmm. and they were like let's look like that right and i'm like man that's the thing that nobody liked about the change in the last show and we actually caught up uh we watched uh, the two-part phalanx episode yes with the uh, self-friend warlock yeah, yeah, yeah and uh and then we saw the last episode like right. the last episode of the x-men animated series which has like that that really weird animation which and sometimes it's okay and i was like this is totally fine and I, and I don't have a problem it, it with it passes the test and then there are some like some frames some moments in there where i was like this is this is bad yeah well it's it, not even rough this is bad well it has a lot to do with just like you know character designs being completely changed it's very much i can imagine that now in the age of whataboutism and 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 well actuallys that like there is a subset of uh, of of huge fans of the x-men cartoon who are like actually the show really hit its stride when it made that change just like there's people who think that like batman season whatever when they all look like triangles looks better than like you know mr freeze like heart of uh heart of ice and i'm like okay you're welcome to have that opinion and be wrong about it but like you know you can't be wrong about your opinion no you can't you, know, you, you can't you can't be wrong about your opinion though that is your opinion and you're welcome to be wrong but like <laughs> it's 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 odd it does look a step up this does not look as bad as like saban yeah 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 but it's but it looks like it's trying to like kind of go from because the the original x-men animated series looks more like make the jim lee stuff but move it yeah make it come to life and it's like yep that's why people loved it and and this was more like make it look as good make it look as close to that show as possible without going over budget or can you make people think of that show yeah and also do it within this very this very stringent budget yeah yeah which i'm like i never understand that i i, I never get disney and they're like they're 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 penny pinching i, I don't understand mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they spend money on like everything in the world and then they're like oh but don't but don't spend too much money over there on the thing where it, you would definitely notice anyway it looks good. I'm, I'm yeah, hyped. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, and I do look forward to watching it. Yeah. And I um, heard there's another season already greenlit, but I think that might be a rumor. I don't know. Sure. sure but, sure, uh, sure. but yeah, X Men '97, man. I'm, 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 I'm excited to see it. It's coming soon. Um, I'm trying to remember when the actual release date is, but uh, it's, it's like March, March twentieth, nice of this year. We're getting uh, the the show and ten episodes. Uh, okay. Ten episodes. Which you know what? Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know what that you know what that means it means we can't like dilly dally. We can't spend all our time walking with Charles and Magnus in the in the Savage Land, running into yet another character and then not caring about them. <laughs> so, I, I'm I'm glad that at least they'll have the time, you know, to really like give us give us some 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 compression. You know, show it all in there. Okay. But yeah, X Men ninety seven baby, yeah. it's, it's happening. It it, it goes. It's going from like theoretical to it's literally here i know a lot of people in the, in the chat had some questions just in general not super yeah but like just, just oh. questions about the series thing, things they're thinking about i can't help but wonder are they going to hang on to the harmonica sting for Bishop? <laughs> bishops in the show I, I know i feel like and this is just me guessing but i'm guessing <laughs> we'll get it one more time okay okay because he's a regular on the show now, yeah. it would be a lot. It would be if every a lot. time he walked so in the room, right. they played it. So but instead, like, I feel like we got to get it one. Come on, you have to give it one time. It's it's a question of who's working on the show and whether they whether they like it and get or, it or like, they remember it. Whether they remember it or whether right. they thought it was funny or or worked. You know, like I'm sure we'll get it. This one's like, for you, more. I'm sure we'll get. You know, we're gonna get the best of the hits. You know, hopefully we'll get Rogue saying some ridiculous saying from down south. I'm yep. looking forward to it. I hope so. Right. Rogue is a breakout character that everybody loves. And uh, the reason why people love Rogue, I think one of the main reasons why anyone today is a Rogue fan is because of the show. Sure. Like I love Rogue from the comics as well, but I would everything say, that she is now is just trying to get to, to make that cartoon. I thing would happen. say the same for Gambit. Absolutely. No, I, <laughs> I, I only like Gambit when he is, approximating I, what we saw from the cartoon i don't show. think it's just because of that but i do think that's a big a part big swath of, of fandom. why people like gambit yeah um 
I, I really am interested in what they're going to be doing with their relationship because I love Rogue and I love Gambit. For, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in that. Right. And of course, Storm. Um, I, you know, I have always loved her costume from that series. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've also loved the Mohawks. So I love that they're kind of like giving kind of oh, the best they're putting of all them together. The I'm, 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 yes. I'm it's excited. interesting. It's an interesting choice. I get it. I get why they would do it. She's head to toe. She is from like nose to toe. It's Storm yeah. from the original show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. question is, and I don't, I didn't, mm -hmm. I haven't looked too deeply into this. Um, they did a, they, there was a weird voice actor thing with Storm from the original show where mm. she was voiced one way. And then when syndication came, they redubbed her with a different actress. So, and just doing the impression of that old actress. And I believe the idea was because everyone in the original cast was, uh, was, was, was Canadian. Um, but maybe that the storm actress was American. And so as a result in syndication, if the show had gone into syndication, she would be due royalties. And so they were like, well then get a Canadian actress to do the exact same voice and then dub over. Cause I remember just cause I'm, I'm like that with sounds. I was like, that's not storm. <laughs> like she said the thing, but it was not exactly like the other thing. So I wonder which, if any actress they got, or if it's a third storm. actress. That's funny. Cause I, you never noticed. I don't know if I ever heard both versions. Mm. I assume I just heard the later one. It must have been. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, because it's not like you were watching it as it was coming out. So, uh, but I watched a lot of that tape. I don't know. I got a, I I have would, a pizza. I tape. don't know if I would know. Yeah. But yeah, it's I interesting. But uh, but look it up. It's, yeah, it's a fun I'm, little I'm piece excited, of trivia. I'm excited. I can't wait to see it. Um, any other news? No. I mean, there, there's, yeah, there's plenty of news, but I haven't heard much. There's, there's only one thing I want to bring Let's up. Let's hear it. Um, and it's not even news, it's just something I know you had commented on and it may be like the person who wrote the article might have taken it the wrong way. Um, oh yeah. He was very unhappy with me. Whatever. And it has nothing to do with the article itself, but like there's a lot of people out there right now um, on social who are trying to make upcoming Marvel and DC movies into a versus fest. Yes. Um, and listen, if that's how you want to take in your media, that is your prerogative. I just feel like no one needs to add any um, fuel to the fire of Marvel's upcoming Fantastic Four movie yep. and DC's upcoming Superman uh, movie. It's just instead of it, like, instead of people worrying about like which side's winning, wouldn't it be nice if we all just won? Yeah, and like they both happen to be good, right? In wouldn't that be really awesome? Like it's it's. It does nothing for any particular person if one movie theater or one movie studio does better than the other. It, no. it only helps all of us if they're good. Yes. And it gets um, more people like back into seeing superhero movies and, and, you know, not just critiquing them for being part of the genre. I, I just I don't understand it. No, um, I mean, well, I understand it perfectly. No, I know I do. I do. But I, I just feel like, you know, it's it's let's just enjoy the fact that it's like, we're, we're all excited right now. Right. We're like, going to, we might like, get a really good Superman movie We we might get a really good fantastic war movie and they might both come out on the same day yeah, or the same weekend. And like, wouldn't that be fun to like, be like, Oh man, like let's do a double feature. Yes. Like we, we all were, we all thought that was like a beautiful celebration of collaboration when it was Barbie and Oppenheimer. And yet when it's the fantastic four and Superman, suddenly uh, someone's declaring war on the other one. It's like, or we're just having, or, or we're all gonna go see both movies, which is like hilarious because uh, if you were thinking about those characters in general, yeah, neither of them would declare Superman war on each other. Superman will one hundred percent go see the Fantastic Four. Yeah, and and like I think most of the Fantastic Four, Reed would probably be too busy doing science. It wouldn't be anything against Superman. Mm -hmm. It would just be he'd be too intellectually stimulated yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. But the rest of the team, they would go see the Superman movie. And totally. It's just like be like the characters you love and yeah. just embrace. The idea that it's like this is this is great. This yeah. is great across the board. This is great for your your for your favorite characters. This is great for future superhero genre movies. Just enjoy it. It you know it's exciting. Yeah, exactly. You know, don't worry. Like people want to make you mad. There's plenty in this world that can do that. That's true. Like, you can stub your toe. You know, you just be mad at that. Be mad at the randomness. Be mad at that kind of crap. Be mad at like actual villains right. in, in your life. We're trying to take your money or Yeah, or but you. like don't let people make you mad about this. There's no reason. Yes. Yeah. Let's just yay. We we saw it images. Like yeah. we saw like a poster and it's like cool. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of which, you know, apropos of that, I mean we yeah. did get that uh, that awesome piece of promo art just, just, from Westbert. Great. Um, which, by the way, good stuff. The uh, you know across the board, this is this is awesome and exciting. And I'll tell you, the first thing I love about it is that they that Marvel released comic art to promote one of their comic book movies. 
I was like, thank you. Yeah. And also, that, I was not a Pedro Pascal fan. I kind of dig how he looks in this. Uh, I, I here's the thing. This is an image. It's a it's it's a it's it, not even real. This is an image. I <laughs> yeah. was just like, this is just fun. I can't judge anything by this. This is just fun. Right. Neat. Cool. Maybe instead of being like, oh man, there so and so is winning, or like you know this cast, whatever. Hey, neat. I think the takeaway here is like. Look at Marvel embracing the comic side of things. That's exactly for right. A second, that's cool. my takeaway. Hey, that's a win. That's a win for everyone. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, uh, that's all I want to say. Speaking of that, I just wanted to name because I was like, I don't know who any of these people are except for Pedro Pascal. Uh, when I saw the image, but uh, Pedro Pascal obviously is Reed Richards, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, uh, Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm, and Eben Moss Bacharach as uh, Benjamin J. Grimm, the ever loving blue eyed thing. Um, of course, uh, I don't think that's how you say his name at all. I believe it is. Is it really? Yes. Uh, but uh, Joseph Quinn is, of course, uh, Eddie from Stranger Things. Right. Uh, Which once you said that, I, all, I was like, yes, I, was like, I see Oh, that. right. Yes, of that. course. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, Vanessa Kirby, I remember seeing her in things, and I'm like, you're cool. And uh, I've never seen The Bear, but I keep being told that he's great uh, or that the show is great. So. I'm I'm like all right, cool. Uh, the thing that I was excited about uh, is just <laughs> the fact that he looks like the thing. Is it like the, right. the thing looks like a friggin' like the like the drawing? And I'm like awesome. And and by the I way, mean, it is a drawing. I know, but like you know, they look like the actors. Um, also, that there's going to be a, a a Herbie robot, or if it is at all, the fact that it's like evoking the feeling of the '60s, uh, sure. and that uh, that Grimm is an astronaut, and obviously you know he's the thing. He's a drawing, but like put him in a put his portrait in the image so you get the uh, the actor's face in there anyway like there's a lot of really smart stuff going on with this yeah we're also getting kind of a glimpse into like is this what the fantastic four uniforms are going to be like i don't know i kind of love them i love them too and like if they are great and if they're not like that's or if they're only there for like a minute in this image i think it's great like i literally could not get over the um the spatial relationship between like sue and reed like i just love what the artist did there i can't get over how dynamic the the move the movement like the energy of it just i was like this is a great this is just a great art piece i'm just enjoying it so yeah that's it Hooray. yeah uh, it's but it's cool i'm excited i hope that uh, dc does the same thing uh in, in terms of like hey when you announce stuff like use art um i saw that um who is it uh one of the artists from X-Men that I like so much, he did the New Mutant series for a little while. Oh, okay. um, he did a little like complimentary piece to this where he's oh, like, cool. Nice. And nice. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's so fun. But like, you know what? Like Fantastic Four and Superman can both have like evoke feelings of like, you know, happiness and like a bit of nostalgia mm -hmm. and like hope and all of that. And it's just like, you know what? Let's just, let's just roll into the next era of like superhero films with like, I don't know kindness right like kindness on on our minds and our lips and just here we go i agree yeah now of course uh, madam red came out and that's a little oh yeah and then madam web exists we're leaving that one in, right back there it's fine it's fine it happened if you enjoyed it good for you if you didn't enjoy it that's it, you're among others we didn't see it but you no. know what that's 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 where we're at well i wouldn't go and see <laughs> that movie uh unless i was paid to go see it but uh even then you know. Anyway, anyway uh, let's talk about some com comics. Uh, man. Yeah, yeah. Comic books, comic books, comic books. Right. Uh, I read Sinister Sons number one from oh my Peter gosh. J. Tomasi I and David LaFuente. I did. Dad. They're bad, mad, and angry at dad. I mean, it's exactly what you expect. It's it's a book about two uh, miffed young teens or preteens. Not they, sure. Are they miffed because they are? The... They have a chip on their shoulder. Each of them, like you know. Uh, 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 but like a chip because they're villains or they're chip because they have like absentee fathers no that's or... that one it's that one one okay. one is trying to like prove that sinestro is their dad and so as a result like has put together a posse to take over the criminal underworld and the other one was excommunicated by zod to go off and live his life but he's mad it's just you know um I won't be reading any more of this book. Uh, it's just it's, not, what, it's just not what I'm looking for. It's cute but enough. Uh, is it what you thought it might be? It's 100% what I expected. Okay. That's uh, fine. David LaFuente's art is uh, exactly what you'd remember from his days on Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, which, mm -hmm. take it or leave it, it's uh, very much an acquired taste. It ain't the cover. Uh, it's, But it does have that kind of youthful, youngish feel to mm -hmm. it. It does, you know, it, it, the kids are kids and they look uh expressive and fun and uh you know the uh, but but it's very um it's very young adult and yeah. uh so for that it 
it, it, it exists and uh, it will probably get like eight issues. Uh, so yeah, I read uh, Batman and Robin number six okay. from uh, Joshua Williamson and this one by Nicola Sismesia. Uh, good luck figuring that out. And um, that was like really good. You said that with a lot of confidence. Thank I you. It. I'm sure I'm wrong, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this is just, um, you know, Batman and Robin, uh, Bruce and Damien, they're living their life. Uh, Bruce is uh, making sure Damien's going to high school. Damien's got a, uh, you He's got a affectation. He likes to draw comics. It was manga, but then when you actually see, see some of his comics, it's Western style. Um, so okay, maybe it's like got a, got a manga. Th- you know, in, in the, maybe he's inspired by. He's inspired it, by it, but, but you got to read right. You got to read left to right. Um, but it's uh, you know, Damien has a theory about uh, a classmate, and so they follow and test that theory, and uh, then they in turn he believes he's the son of Zaz, and then he tries to free Zaz, and then. Uh, it turns out there his parents were murdered by Zaz, and so um, there's that. They also have a very strong suspicion about who Shush is, and uh, and, and they're not very subtle about it. They Damien as uh, Damien Wayne like just goes up to her. She's like, "I know you're Shush," and it's like, "What are you doing?" Like Batman wouldn't. It's weird that like Damien's very cavalier about that. Um, the the real like meat and potatoes of this, the reason why you'd want to read this as opposed to like, any other Batman book, is because like. Uh, Bruce is like a human being and Damien is sympathetic and you're watching the relationship sure, blossom sure. and, 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 and uh, exist like, like real people and, mm-hmm. or the very least like a father and son right, right, in right, fiction. Right, right. And I, I enjoy that dynamic quite a bit. Um, and then a surprise, a character from the uh, Joshua Williamson Robin series appears. And uh, it is one of my favorite like images of Batman in a while where he actually like, he looks like a dad and it's really cute. I'm like, all right, this is a fun book. It's worth, it's worth reading. If you are looking for like a reprieve, for any of the intense stuff going on in either detective okay. or Batman. I like that cover. Cause it looks like Damien's past and being Robin is chasing him as he's just trying to be a kid. Yes. Like yeah. It's like a little Robin flying behind him. He's just trying to play soccer. Mm-hmm. The kid just wants to play some soccer. Yeah. I don't think I've actually seen Damien play soccer yet. Like well, he's, like, he plays it, but he gets bullied and you know, it's and, just, and there's something about that, right? Like, especially like, and again, I'm, I'm reading into a cover. Like right. Exactly. Cover image well, the cover, cover is supposed to like, you know, sometimes it's just a cover image, right? Like it's just meant to sell you a book, right? Maybe that doesn't say what's inside of it, but it's just selling you that specific. Yeah. This is the, uh, this is the premise. This is the idea. Right. Um, but it, there's something that I'm, thinking or like realizing now for some reason seeing this cover it just brings this thought to the forefront of my mind that it's like damien is such the opposite of tim yes tim was like i'm a normal kid and i want to be a robin uh-huh. and this image seems like damien's like i just kind of want to be a kid no it's it's un- i wish it were that uh, oh, it's more like batman's okay. like i wish you were a kid i ne- okay. like th- there's a real moment where like bruce and damien have a have a minute and he's like you know i never went to high school but damien says that no bruce does oh, yeah like i yeah. never had that Right. And I kind of thought you'd have that. Like, I, I want that for both of us. Right. Okay. Okay. So, Maybe yeah. get there. I know he won't. They won't let that happen. No. Especially not with what's coming out movie-wise. But Oh, yeah. No, no. Um, okay. But it's cute. It's a fun book. All right. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read Wolverine this week, number 43. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is... Uh, the Gorefest. Yeah. And, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of that in there. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, this specific issue had like, we, we like moved the plot along, but it just didn't feel like they moved it along as much. Mm -hmm. But again, that could be just because I feel like the first issue, like a lot of stuff happened. Yeah. Um, as like an opening salvo. So I, you know, sure. It's like, I think again, like when I think back, like how I was going to read as like a trade, I think it'd be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is written by uh, Victor Lavelle and Ben Percy with art by Jeff Shaw. And, um, this is, you know, this is um lavelle and percy's you know, magnum opus in terms of their like uh, like each of their respective books of like saber tooth and wolverine and then the, the long history those two characters have and the fact that it's like you know on wolverine's birthday saber tooth shows up and messes things up and you know what in the midst of the fall of the house of x um you know victor had to change up his his plans and yes. uh, he's making it work right mm-hmm. he's making it work for himself um, we also in this in this specific issue um, are reintroduced to the team, like those other uh, X mutants, not X Men, but mutants that were like put into the pit as well. In, oh yeah, uh, Lavelle's Sabretooth series. 
Well, uh, and sense. then Sabretooth and the Exiles, they form the Exiles themselves. Uh-huh. They're they're doing their own thing. They're they're off on their own, trying to be like, listen, we're gonna do what Krakoa couldn't, and and here we go. We're gonna do like what we're doing. Um, only to find out that Sabretooth is back, and that they probably need to jump in, into action and, yeah. and and you know put an end to him. Um, meanwhile, Laura is in fact not dead. Surprise, spoilers. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> but she, she there there's the threat of that constantly. Sure, yeah. Happening. We do get like each issue. If you're expecting there to be a hyper violent moment, that will happen. One hundred percent. That happens to Laura in this. Yep. Um, but she's still good, I guess. As she's horribly she brutalized be. in this book. Yeah. But it's fine. Right, because she can heal. Yeah. I guess. Um, I mean, she's a Wolverine. I don't right. like she's you know. Resilient. They they killed Doc and he was you know yeah. like Wolverine himself. Leaving like, both fans really upset. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you're, if you're a member of the Wolverine family, no, nobody's safe. No, exactly. None, and and, and, and we safe. haven't really seen Sabretooth like declare war fully on the Wolverine family. But right. Again, they really it was interesting in this. You know, we get a lot of flashbacks to like you know Victor and Logan doing their thing in the in the past. You know in vietnam um you know at other points in time but possibly being mercs um and that like victor seems to think that he's like you know logan used to be like this one way and now he's not and he'd be better off dead than the way he is now oh and okay like, so it's uh it's it's death of the family kind of i think it's i don't think it's necessarily really that i think it's like saber thinking he's justifying yeah his horrible behavior by being by having like a th- like a like a theme yeah here's my here's my thesis yeah yeah okay saber tooth whatever exactly you... exactly um but i mean that's it like yeah you know that, that's what the series is we knew that's what it was going into it if, if you're shocked by that you know this is not the series for you then Shocking. you know they didn't but i'm just saying like they didn't act marvel nor percy nor lavelle act like you. yeah like they're like this is what this is going to yep. be here it is mm-hmm. you know and so like i do respect that they, totally. they did not try to debate and switch you. They weren't like, oh, no, what's going to happen here? Like, this is the story they wanted to tell. They told you what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if that's not what you're interested in, then, then don't uh, read then, it. And you're just going to have to wait, I think, until their run is over. Yep. And uh, then you can read Dr- Greg Capullo's Wolverine book. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. 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 So there there it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, really quick, we should jump into some super chats because yeah, Hulkzilla let's, let's says, Happy it. Monday as always. Oh, and also you. from the last week, happy birthday to Ben. He Aww. brings a lot of humor to the shows. Best wishes to him and his loved ones. Yeah, he's pretty thank great. You. We love Ben. <laughs> uh, the uh, Thel Man Cal L Data, uh, Comp Up Woo. Thanks you. very much. I uh, hope you're both having a great day. Any chance of you doing a back episode on Secret Six? Not anytime soon. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, maybe one day. Maybe. Maybe, but uh, probably not. Uh, Paul Williams, uh, thank you very much for your generosity. My X-Men journey through Kakoa has been going well. I am now onto the reign of X nice. period. Uh, also sad to hear that Tom Taylor and Renard and uh, Bruno Redondo are leaving Nightwing after the upcoming last arc. It's true, they are oh, leaving. I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, no one seems to be particularly very upset. It's kind of like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Well, because like, you know, that's what happens when things, when when good things consistently happen to your favorite oh, character. Okay. It's an easy time to stop reading. People just think it's like, oh no, it's fine. I don't have to check in every month because I know that my character is protected. That's how Zeb Wells gets work. Folks, keep reading Nightwing and your favorite character, your favorite writer won't kick, won't, won't leave the book. Now Nightwing will get shot in the head again. Who knows? No, I'm kidding. Who knows what will happen to Nightwing, but... Uh, you know, Tom Taylor's got big plans. Who knows? Okay. Uh, the Fodderbox Kid Howdy. Love uh, catching you guys live. I'm currently binge reading Berserk over halfway through the series now. P.S. Nice. Love Ghost Rider X Men back issues. Thank you. Well, thank you very well, much. You're, you're one, was, of, the, you're one of the fun. the the lucky few who watched that episode, <laughs> uh, and we do appreciate it. And I, I did not know. I did not know it was going to come out on Mardi Gras. I was like, no, what? So I put that out. I was like, wow, that was good timing. And then I was like, he didn't. He know. didn't know that. I had no idea. Well, he didn't know that. We would have made a bigger deal of it then, right? Uh, Paul Williams also tinfoil hat theory no precogs on Krakoa was editorial saying no one was allowed to bring back original Madam Web <laughs> love the juggernaut episode that's funny no I feel like that was that was very much a like no one I don't want any plot holes on the island who could give away Moira's secret that was their way of doing that. Mm. Madam Web is just like, you could easily just forget about that, Madam Web, as did most uh, movie going audiences. Right, right, right. Uh, the Milkman says, I'm excited for 97. Hopefully they do X Men Evolution. I would not hold my breath. Uh, Edge Romulus, I hope if the X Men revival does well, Marvel might do a revival for 90 Spider Man series. I think if, if X Men 97 is the runaway success that Marvel is treating it like, yeah. 
Spider-Man 95 or whatever they'd call it is not far behind because what? I mean, like for, here's the thing for the cultural consciousness and it's understanding of X-Men thanks in large part to that cartoon show. Yeah. So it, so it is too with Spider-Man and while Spider-Man has had more adaptations since then, yeah, yeah, yeah. that cartoon has had more impact than you think on mm -hmm. the Spider-Man zeitgeist. Uh, given if you look at that cartoon and all the decisions that it has made and every bit of Spider-Man media that you've ever seen, mm -hmm. like the fact that the symbiote makes you like tired and aggressive and more powerful is right, entirely right, right, a fabrication right. from that specific cartoon show. Um, shocker being anything uh you know literally like there's a lot of that show that is just permeated every corner and you yes. can feel and yes. i know exactly what it is and i've talked about it on my show with dj spider versity on his patreon but like yes the 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 the, the, the scuttlebutt our theory mm -hmm. is and it's an unofficial non like backed up theory is that the show short it's 22 minutes long you know it's, it's maybe 22 minutes long right uh, per episode most uh, the fact that like there is a producer a massive there was a massive producer like john peters who was reportedly illiterate uh and yet still managed to be like a massive hollywood producer okay um despite the fact that you need to read scripts in order to uh well that's what they say them. but apparently not you just have to have them read to you sure and then you just go go <laughs> but uh but in this case i sincerely believe that most people who are like oh i want to do a spider-man thing they're like great uh here's this cartoon show you can watch right like I, I really feel so like that if, if that show has such a strong impact and the fact that like there's not a, not a scrap of references to that show mm -hmm. in the jam packed overflowing ep uh, uh, movie across the spider verse says to me that either they're saving it for some reason. Right. Okay. Or they're already planning something with it. Sure. You know, like, sure. I really think that either like Madam Web or Christopher Daniel Barnes as Spider-Man is going to show up in a big way in across the spider-verse two or three or whatever it is into the spider-verse three okay or they're gonna make spider-man 95 like it just hears them hmm. you know yeah but anyway yeah, yeah. okay uh, yeah. okay uh ray far comp pop woo thanks man uh, well, x-men 97 looks fun and i hope it's great but the use of 3d animation looks to look like 2d is lame to me personally also i love madam web fart yeah who doesn't love madam web um mm -hmm. no i i agree um it's frustrating it's frustrating when i see like i mean like you know especially when like you should check out there's these great little like shorts that marvel made and i don't recall what they were advertising mm. but like they were these little like short movies okay from like the 2000s of um you know like iron man and spider-man teaming up with uh like the hulk and they were done with like what looked like cutting edge computer animation quality mm. and they were really fun and i'm like why don't you just make that like why don't you just do that I mean, I'm sure it was insanely expensive for like four minutes of animation, <laughs> but like, you know, how much more expensive could it possibly be? Yeah, I get you. I get to you. just make it look like you had a, a, an animation studio hand draw a cartoon. I don't, I don't understand. Um, G uh, Gavan S. Uh, hi, I've been a fan for years. Well, thanks well, for thank you very much. Started when I was 14 back in 2015. You guys started my love for trade paperback collecting and hey. made me feel less alone in this world. Oh, thanks, man. Well, Gavin, so that means a lot because that's that's how uh, certain other uh, comic book institutions back when I was a kid uh, made me feel, you know, like my comic book retailer and yeah. uh, and my wizard magazines made me feel like wasn't uh, I could make like little little references. And, yeah. You know, people, uh, even though the people at large didn't uh, didn't understand what I was talking about. Sure. Stone Trunks. I've uh, been watching you guys that uh, for three years now. Love the show. Thank you very Thank much. You very three much. years. Not bad. Uh, if they do end up making a 90s Spider-Man revival, I hope we get more crazy screams from Christopher Daniel Barnes. The fact that we didn't get any screaming about Shocker in the Spider-Man 2 video game. Yeah. This is just an outrage. <laughs> this is an outrage. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but anyway, yes, I, I agree. I hope so, too. I wonder if he would be open to it or if he's like, I'm not going to feed into the meme machine <laughs> i know it's a i know i'm a joke Aww. it's like he's you're not mary jane yeah listen yeah I there's know. a lot of great voice listen like people are you going for it you're yeah exactly swinging, you gotta go for you it go for it you gotta go for it uh, just gotta go for it uh, jason holtman and nelson daniel uh revived night thrasher 
You know, I saw that, but I didn't like when we covered it on GVU, and I wasn't going to read it. Now. Yeah, and uh, you know, what's interesting is there's uh, there's some there's some rage about this book. Really? Uh, well, the fact that like the promotions were basically like out of the '90s and into the now, and like people working on Night Thrasher from the '90s are kind of like, bite me. Like, this, you know, this ain't your grandpa's Night Thrasher, and it's like, well, you know what? We were trying stuff back then. Don't be, don't be so harsh on me. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, this book is uh, it, it exists. Oh. It's okay. uh, you know, Night Thrasher is you know, obviously when Night Thrasher was first invented, he was invented to be a teen superhero. Yeah. And he, uh, you know, so this is more like if almost like if real time had happened, and so like he's an older person. And he's like, okay. I'm back in, like, you know, I'm back in. Old Man Night Thrasher, without calling it Old Man yeah, Night Thrasher. Yeah, it kind of is. But I'm like, well, if that's the case, how old are you, Night Thrasher? Like, somewhat older, you, old, older. You could be at maximum Man. 24. Hmm. There's no way. Okay. Uh, a few things I will say that are good about this book. Uh, silhouettes in it, and I like silhouette, and I love that she's back. Uh, at, at the very least, as a relegated fifth wheel supporting character but okay that means the people will be reminded the silhouette exists okay a female person of color uh you know differently abled superhero okay i really loved her when she was first on the new warriors and i uh i i always wondered why she wasn't back and here she is again and she's she's back and she's, she's better than ever yeah, no oh okay. no she's not she's, no, she's, she's not she's better than ever back. she was better when she was a, a, a popular character okay or a character on the new warriors okay this fair. is she is in a night thrasher book oh. um but yeah no no skateboards in this one folks this is uh he's just got the night sticks but yeah he's uh you know he, he's gonna try and take on uh gang violence and it turns out that like a former new warrior slash former avenger uh actually one of marvel's most shazam-esque characters rage uh has uh, returned and he's mad and he's back and better than he's ever. no he's much worse than he was before uh okay, i'm sorry no it's it, that that book this book would not earn the better than ever moniker uh, at all uh this book you know it, it needed another pass on art it needed another pass on the script it's it's just not great it's okay. i wish it were better it's a very triumphant like return to the character in terms of its presentation right but ultimately, uh, you know, it, it reads more. It reads actually more indie than it reads Marvel. Okay, but uh, well, but it doesn't. That's okay. Yeah, it doesn't take as big a swing as it needs to in order for it to be like indie. Like you know, it's it's very it's it's almost like it's safe. But um, I feel like that it must have they must have hit a couple of walls when they were working with Marvel to make this thing. Okay. Um, not to say that it is groundbreaking or transcendental or anything. It's just you know it's it's pushing boundaries and it's and it's very much like. You know, it it is it is black driven, and I'm like, good, like, yeah, cool. Right. Marvel deserves this and needs it. Uh, not that it deserves it. Marvel needs that. Marvel needs a like black creator focused book mm -hmm. starring a black first character. Yeah, I love that. Um, I just wish that this was this was a better read. Okay. Um. Yeah. What about you, Tiffany? What did you read? Um, I read Vengeance of the Moon Knight number two hey. this week, written by Jed McKay with art by Alessandro Capuccio. Right on. Um, I really am liking these like um kind of character spotlights via their therapy sessions. Yeah. So like, last time it was Reese, this time it's Tigra. And sure. I was like, that's that's great. cool. But it's also progress it, it this is clever. It's clever because it's like, hey, let's deal with their the each of these characters and what they're going through and their takes on what other characters are going through as well. Mm -hmm. But also let's continue to further the actual plot. We're not just seeing like a specific moment from different angles. We're continuing the plot yeah. of what's what has been happening. I mean, we're not hitting the brakes on the moon night series right to, to, to check in with characters right or we're not like you know okay let's like only deal with the first like 24 hours post moon knight's death no it's like we are like okay we got some like like what's reese been up to cool she was doing this 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 and this and then this happens cool yeah. tiger how has she been dealing with things well let's take it from what we learned from reese move on from there and then see what happened next in the story okay too. and i'm like okay cool i like this i like this a lot i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing who we get next yeah um, feel like it will be hunter's moon probably and that's totally fine um we get the first indication because it's like who's behind the mask of this new moon night what's going on right mm -hmm. like this new moon um <laughs> i think he, my i can't remember if they refer to him that 
as that earlier or them as mm. that earlier. Um, but like he mentioned something about being the new moon and has like darkness based powers. And I was like, you know, if I if I wanted to sit for a second, I'm sure we could all piece this together. And I'm sure somebody has. But I'm like, you know, I'm just going to read the book as BK puts it out. It's fine. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Well, like, oh, yeah. Like, you can do all the phases and you're like, OK, well, I mean, like you could probably guess based on like Moon Knight's mythos yeah. and like powers and such like who might this be or what the, might like what Jeb McKay is trying to get to. And then I was like, just enjoy the book. <laughs> just, just read the book. Don't right. Read. It's fine. This is an early House of X. Yeah. It, I'm not trying to solve a puzzle I'm not, here. I'm not. I just want to enjoy the, the journey I'm on here. Um, But there is, you know, obviously there's this moment where yeah, like Hunter Moon's like, okay, like if you are really my, like my brother, Mark, yeah. you know, show me your face, take the mask off or I'm going to do it for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so this, like, there we get this so fight, fight, you know, stuff like that. And then eventually Reese is like, okay, enough is enough. Cause everybody's getting their butts kicked. Yeah. And, um, she's like, if you're moon Knight, then this is your mission and you should be fine. Right. Yeah. Because the mission don't forget is like a supernatural entity at this mm -hmm. point. And so he goes in there and the mission's like, no, mm -hmm. I don't know what this is, Yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is not moon Knight. No. Or maybe it, we don't know. You know, we don't find it's, out. He's you different. Know. He's changed. It's something's different, or it's someone else. Right. It's just Conshu. I had that thought too. I was like, is it just Conshu? Did Conshu get out? Because Conshu was trapped. Right. And that's why Moon Knight couldn't come back. So if it was Conshu, then, then why? Mark could come back. And yeah. also, yeah, maybe he chose not to, or maybe he has to die. Yeah. In order to bring back Mark. Yeah. You know, so. kind of like the Superior Spider Man. So, well, like, we'll see what happens. But, like, I, I just, this is great. It's great. You know, it's weird that it's. it's a different series. I get them calling it something different. They are, you know, yeah, because when it's not technically in it, no. Um, but I could imagine, like, you know, if you pick this up, you'd be like, what? It, right. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe you could piece it together based on the, the info way, page or the info something. page and, and you know the information that is being brought up via these therapy sessions, so mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel like it's like an info dump where it's like blah. Um, yeah. But it probably is more impactful if you've read the Moon Knight series up to this point. And then there's um, not a lot. Right. I am just thrilled with the fact that we're still getting more of McKay's take on Moon Knight at, going forward. Yeah, he's not done talking about Moon Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, again, like if you read the last issue of, of his Moon Knight title, um, that letter in the back just goes to show you how much of a fan he is of this specific character. Yeah. Um, and so like, I feel like he'll write it for as long as they'll let him. Uh, well, or as long as he has a story to tell. He's a bit of a golden boy, so I imagine he'll be there for a while. Right, right. So, you know, good, good, good stuff. Um, yeah. You know, he, McKay really does like his mysteries. And I know, obviously, mystery is often a large part of comics just in general, even if they're not billed as like a mystery thriller or something well, sure. like that. But McKay really leans into that a lot of times surrounding the death of a character. Uh -huh. Um, So and I, I feel like he's going to definitely hopefully uh, walk the line away from it being Mark being back in here since he did that. Since we with did that with Strange Dr. Strange Har already. The Harvestman. Um, but we'll see. You never know. I mean, Moon Knight is a very different character mm -hmm. in terms of, um, you know, what's going on with him, his, you know, disassociated dis Just identity disorder. disorder um, and um, how that could be treated in terms of um, his return. You right. know what I mean? So, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And uh, I, I just I continue to like it. And I think it's still a good quality book. Yeah. You know, just I never thought of myself as a Moon Knight fan. Right. And here we and are. Here we are. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Raidu says, happy Monday, Comic Pop. Thank you very much, oh, Raidu, for your you. generosity. You. The trailer did not make me as nervous as the long tailed cat in a room full of rocket chairs <laughs> so far. Looking forward to Storm shouting her Dr. Orpheus esque monologues again. Thank rain you. yeah no literally baptize this land that um a hundred percent yeah i i love that i love i love that big show that that drama that everything about her mm -hmm. <laughs> uh ray far storm is one of my favorite characters and is my x-men leader yeah. i can't stand her show uh version always yelling <gasps> hearing angela bass it was almost storm Makes me sad. No. Yeah, she was almost storm. Oh, but I, I love that. I love her always yelling. I always did. I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I'm just I I'm here for that version of her. And that maybe that's part of what it is. It's like, you know, you'll see this a lot in particular with 
um, some manga to anime. Yeah. You know, of course, I'm thinking Sailor Moon because that's where my brain always goes, where it's like they wanted to make this show as the the comic or the manga was still coming out. And so the show had to change. Mm -hmm. They're pretty simple. They're similar in terms of the overall, like how the story ends up going, but how they get there is often a little different. And it does feel like... You know, when you when you look at a property like that, oftentimes you're like, well, that's the anime's take on it. And then there's the manga's take right. on it. And I feel like X-Men 97, like the original cartoon was like based on the Jim Lee stuff and definitely touched on a lot of the stories in there, but did it in a different way to the point where it became its own thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it is based in the Jim Lee world of comics and like that, like, you that, know, incredible like, success as yes. it was coming out, but it like morphed into, <laughs> it morphed into its own thing. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think people are like are so into it because it was easily one of the more approachable versions of those characters. Yes. So much so that, you know, during Krakoa, we saw like that, that, that X-Men 97, that take on yeah, what Krakoa, on Krakoa would be from them, which is so funny. Cause it's like, well, but these characters are, from what Jim Lee had done. Yeah. And we've gotten to here. Right. Uh, but we're going to do our own thing there. So anyway. I know. I know. Uh, Shadow Anderson, thanks for your generosity. Off topic, but I've been rewatching the older Rich back issues and I realized that you did books that led to Battle of the Cowl, but never did it or the books to follow. I love Dick, Dick as Batman. Yeah. Uh, Dick was a great Batman. Uh, the reason why I didn't do it was because I was like, well, I mean, we kind of know what happens. Like the, everybody kind of has the context for it. So why bother? Uh, that was my approach back then. Now it's like, well, why not? So, yeah, one of these days. Nice. Uh, Abe Sapien, thank you very much for your generosity. Hey, Popsicles, been really enjoying the creator interviews you guys have been having. Well, thank you. You're the one who's been watching. I <laughs> uh, hope to see more. I'm also really excited for Savage Sword of Conan to drop next week. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, apropos uh, interviews, uh, two more coming up. Um, Jason Aaron. Yeah. We're shooting that tomorrow. I, I thought we were going to tease it, but no, you're right. Just, well, just no, there's, say there's, it. There's, two, there's, there's another one that's there's coming up. There's another one. And that's coming up this week, theoretically. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. And uh, yeah, yeah. So, and that's a big one too. Yeah, two big uh, ones. Yeah, Fable, sure. uh, Kamvab Wu. Wu to you. Woo, woo. Uh, hey guys, thoughts on the Cap Wolverine and Black Widow book that came out last week? It was a fun read. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't read it. I didn't even know it existed. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I oh no no I got nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't hear about it. Doesn't mean that. But thank you. Yeah, well, let's check it out. Devin Ferris, how's it going, guys? Do you think now that Marvel and DC are doing team up books, uh, do you could we get reprints of the DC versus Aliens Predator books? Yeah, I mean we should. Um, that is basically a Marvel DC crossover, so I mean they should probably do that'd that. be that's what they're talking about. Yeah, I know. No, so no, I'm saying like that's what that's what the leaks were about. It wasn't about the actual amalgams and yeah. stuff like that. They're like, no, we're gonna print. No, those. we gotta get some DC. Uh, well, the re the reality is like CB Zabolski is just a big fan of Batman versus Predator, and he's really sad that Tom King couldn't write one. So he's like, fine. He saw the episode, obviously, that we talked about, where Tom said very early on in, in our interview process, he was like, I, I can't believe I can't do a Batman Predator. And so he was like, well, I mean, Jesus, we, we can make that happen. All we got to do is just uh, sign a couple contracts, get like promo out of here. We can make it happen. <laughs> and now we are. So, yeah, I'll ask Tom uh, next time we have him on. I'll be like, if they asked, would you do it? I mean, he'd be like, yeah, because I mean, like one of his approaches is like he does what they ask, not like he doesn't pitch them books. They're like, like Wonder Woman. They were like, would you like to do Wonder Woman? He's like, yeah, I can come up with something. Okay. It's not like I've got a penguin book. They were I, like, could you do a penguin? Book? I'm ready to go with my penguin. Book. Yeah. <laughs> right. I would love to read a Batman Predator written by friggin' Tom King. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, honestly, I take the sweet. I'll take Joshua Williamson's Batman Predator. He knows he invented a Predator, Ahab. Um, I would see Scott Snyder's uh, Batman Predator. Chip Zdarsky's Batman Predator. My Batman Predator. Uh, never going to get that happen. But uh, six says, uh, what do you think is the optimal way to read? I love dip physical, but digital is cheaper mm -hmm. and less stores similar to Lemma to Floppy versus Trade. Uh, there's, you know, there, it, it really depends. Sometimes I like to just sit down and read. Um, other times when, when it comes to new books, I like to read digitally. I, I prefer it. I find it a little easier. I can sit in my big chair mm -hmm. and look at the screen. It's a, it's a big screen right here on my face and I just click through it. And it's a little bit easier for me to read. I can read faster digitally. Yeah, I agree with that. I it depends. It really depends on the qual for me it comes down to the quality of the print of the book. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I I sometimes I want the experience of like a a beautifully crafted um book, a, yes. a, a, a love lovingly printed uh tome. Mm -hmm. Uh but 
I love the digital experience because of the, um, the guided suspense. view. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it ensures that I can't look Spoil ahead. Yourself. Uh, yeah. Like things are happening. And I'm like, Whoa, Oh, that's great. Oh, thank you. There you go. I was like, what's happening? Um, so I, I love, 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 love the digital experience. But like I said, when it comes to like a well-crafted, you know, um, well, lovingly printed book book. Like, yeah. There there's is, no substitute. There is something about that. Absolutely. There is absolutely something about that. And, and for a lot of books that I read digitally, I will buy yeah. like a nice edition. Um, mm -hmm. And for the record, by the way, I'm buying the DC Marvel omnibuses. Those are purchased. Oh, yeah. I am going to purchase those. Either I'm going to pre-order them from my local comic yeah. store or I'm going to go on stocktrace.com and buy them for free. But, uh, yeah. Who knows? I will probably do both. Uh, we'll see. I, I want to support them. I want to. Yeah, I want them want, to know that's what I want. Is, for sure. So I'll probably pre-order them. I know that they are available for pre-order right now. Um, but... Uh, I saw Walt Simonson post some pages. I don't know if I talked about this last episode, but he was like, well, I guess since people know that that's happening, here are some of my pages from my Titans X-Men crossover that I drew. He's just showing these like beautiful pages and how, how he has them. He's just like, I have them and you can look at them. And I'm like, well, then maybe IDW should make an oversized artist edition of Teen Titans X-Men. Because I have the Walt Simonson Archie Goodwin alien book from them and it's friggin' amazing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's over there. I keep it. I, I it's never more than twenty feet away from me at all times. But uh, <laughs> do you want it? No, it's fine. Okay. No, I wouldn't want you to just go right over where my easy chair is and grab it. I mean, that would be ridiculous for you to just get up and do that. But uh, but I'm telling you, man, uh, uh, Walt Simonson's art is it, it needs to be seen big, uh, just like Daniel Warren Johnson's art needs to be seen big. So, hey, Marvel, if you're listening, Daniel Warren Johnson's books all need artist editions, and they need to be like printed bigger. Uh, if we got that Silver Silver Black book like this because we like Trad more, and we do, uh, I want that. It's not there. All right. I thought it was against the wall, but I guess it's not. Oh, I know where it is. It's probably over here. It's in the magazine rack, I think. Well, while you're doing that, uh, yay, it's here. That's interesting, just some guy with a mustache. Yes, two people worked on Beta Ray Bill. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, look at this. This thing, it's bigger than my head. It's, uh, it's the illustrated comic book ad adaptation of the alien... Uh, movie and uh oh this thing like look at this you know how great it is just page one i mean just but look at this you can see like in these artist editions you can see like not only is it just his amazing art but also you can see like coffee stains you can see like scotch tape residue you can see where they had to take the speech balloon and drop it and then like stick it to the to the pages themselves. Um, you can see where they like the blue means they had to change the line. The black is where, or or maybe not. I don't actually remember which ones which ones which. But like the differences between the black text and the and the blue text. Um, it just just oh, this is this is worth purchasing. Um, I don't know if it's still in print. And uh, I actually is this Dark Horse or is this IDW? Uh, Titans. Titans. Okay. Well, might be, but uh, yeah, man, I want, I want this. I want every uh, Walt Simonson book to be like this, especially Titans X-Men, because you want to see all oh, this came with script pages scanned and lovingly recreated. Uh, look at that. Look at the, look at the derelict ship in all of its glory. And, and you can actually pour over it. Like, this is a book where when I was doing my comic, I did this comic. It doesn't matter. You can't see it anymore. I took the website down. But uh, yes. you, but uh, I, I looked over this book and listened to the Tron Legacy soundtrack. That was all I did was just was just immerse myself in this kind of art. Um, the best part of it for me, though, uh, is the fact that it's also signed by Walt Simons. <laughs> He's an incredible signature. He does. I mean, the dude who designed and drew, uh, created Beta Ray Bill, stands to reason he would have a dope uh, signature. But yeah, meeting him and talking to him and getting him to sign this this, this dinosaur of a book, it's just uh, just awesome. So thank you very much, lovely and talented Tiffany, for 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 modeling that. So if you haven't already, you should pick up the uh, the, the Alien Artist Edition. But uh, and tell uh, whoever will listen that you want uh, Titans X Men to be to be in that edition as well, because I will I will buy it. But uh, you have any other books? Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> At least one, right? I don't want one. Well Okay, so just really quickly, I didn't get a chance to finish Hunger in the Dusk this week, but Hunger in the Dusk number six? Eight? Six? 
six came out this week. Um, this yep, is like six. right before they're going on a short break. And by I say short, I mean the next like book two is coming out in summer. Yeah. Like of 2024. So it's like a break, but not a break. Mm-hmm. Um, love this series. It's an amazing fantasy series uh, with a incredibly crafted fantasy world that feels simultaneously lived in and like new, new and fresh for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's new and fresh and comfortable feeling at the same time. Mm. So love this book. Uh, go check it out. Obviously, I'm sure I believe the trade is coming soon. So if you haven't yes. been grabbing this, you can go and pre-order the trade. Um, it's IDW. It's Hunger in the Dusk. G. Willow Wilson and Chris Wild Goose. Great stuff. So good. Yes. And if you want to know more about The Hunger in the Dusk, you can check out Tiffany's roundtable discussion with the entire creative team from The Hunger in the Dusk. It came out on this channel. It is available for free. You can watch it anytime you want to. You and uh, two of your friends, then you can get you can triple the views. But um, I'm kidding. It's, it, we we were very happy with how that video yeah. came out, and uh, I know it was it was a it was a lot to ask people to do a lot of those interviews. So I apologize for putting out so many at the same time. But uh, but that was a fun conversation. It was. You were a great I had moderator. A good time. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. No, but the other book that came out that I read this week is Fall of the House of X, number two. Yes, number Fall of the two. House of X, Polaris's redemption. Th- not redemption. This is like. This is like Requiem for uh, Polaris. Like Polaris was kind of promised to be like put kind of on the map when she was put on the X-Men during the Krakoa era. Yeah. And then kind of just like she was cool and she was there. But like now we're getting some Well, she Polaris. wasn't like, you know, she was on it, but she wasn't sure if she should be on it after she was on it. And yeah. Then, and I really liked that. And then post what happened with Magneto, she's really like, well, someone's got to step up. We got to do this. Like, yeah. It's got to get done and I have to do it for, for, for now. I still am the only daughter of Magneto. So here we go. Yeah. 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 No, I love, I love the look. I love the fit. I love the fact that like, you know, she calls herself the new ma- like the master of magnetism. Like I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm 1000% here for it. Um, this is written by Jerry Duggan with art by Lunas, Wer- uh, Lucas Wernick. Yes. Um, and this is, you know, on our, our trip through the fall of house of X, uh, we were promised uh, that the brew and the rest of the brood who'd have been um, put on the celestial head would be returning mm-hmm. with with Polaris. Um, you know, as she arrives, it, it's determined that like a lot of this plan is not fully planned out. Right. Which I kind of appreciate. They're like, that didn't work. Yeah. And so like, having a really well crafted so, like, scheme, like there are elements that are planned and then there are other things where it's like, and then Polaris will show up and she'll do something cool. <laughs> That, I mean, like, I think that's actually not a bad <laughs> approach for writing comic books. <laughs> um, and, and so she does. And they're clearly working here in order to get certain pieces off the table, right? Like, they're, they are, our, our X teams are attempting to um, remove power players from Orcus to break them down the way that they broke them down, right? Yeah. <laughs> Also funny that you did put out a book about, about the, the brood, brood and X Men. Come on, folks! Uh, this is some serious synergy happening over on YouTube.com/slash Comic Pod. <laughs> Free to watch the episode for love for the love of God. Plus, uh, Ghost Rider, right? Uh, so obviously, um, Polaris is bringing the the brood. Bring while, the noise, bring the funk. While uh, Wolverine post whatever happens with wolverine war which i guess he's fine yeah he's fine saber tooth war uh saber tooth war um i like wolverine war. wolverine war oh uh, that's that's his life every day yeah. um uh, he and colossus are are staging a like break into uh into the bloom yes and uh it's hilarious it's like last like they literally they're on the ship wolverine's been like captured by like bob and like there's a bob there who's like so wait do i get like paid for this or something and they're like wait the Bob who caught him is like three and a half feet taller than you. What the hell? And then you see this like, you know, fully um, decked out Orcus, you know, uh, security force person, right? Mm-hmm. You can't see their face. And he's like, I'm also Bob. <laughs> and like, Wolverine's like, I knew this was going to work. It's Colossus. <laughs> and it's like, He's like, yeah, you wanted to kill your way into there. He's like, it's smarter to kill our way out because a lot of the X-Men at this point are done. Right. <laughs> they're like, they're not done with humanity, but they are done with Orcus. Yes. Oh, and, yeah, and yeah. so they're like... Let's just drop a Wolverine-shaped bomb like, on this place. Screw you. Nightcrawler's also part of this team, which, again, I love this group. I like this trio of Wolverine, Colossus, and uh, Nightcrawler. Yeah. It's just fun. 
right? Because that has like shades of Deadpool and Colossus from the Deadpool movie. Yeah. Um, you know, you have Kurt who can be that, you know, that moral center, mm -hmm. but sometimes isn't. Right. You know, you have Colossus who is just kind of, you know, like I just I'm I just got here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I like didn't get gonna, to I didn't get to have sex in the grotto. He's gonna make up for lost time for sure. <laughs> Um, but I, I just love those three working together and, you know, their plan is, of course, to, to fight their way in to take down Dr. Stasis. Oh, They're yeah. Get rid of him. Um, it doesn't work out the way they want. Stasis does get away simultaneously. Emma is is on planet as they're like also fixing to free Cyclops mm. and, uh, you know, several other things. They've already taken the medicine off the table. They got rid of that contingency that that Orcus could use against them um, because humanity has no idea. Humanity is literally just like. What? Yeah, we're like we're what? like giving out scholarships like what? for Orcus and stuff, and we're like I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Wait, what? Um, but uh, so like when when Polaris shows up with the brood, like they're like, okay, oh, cool. I mean, we knew that's you the were, signal. We knew you were showing up. Yeah. Um, so they also have sent Juggernaut, who was like, I raided Cable Stash, and I have one of Cable's guns. Yeah. So it's like Juggernaut armed with a cable gun. Oh, that's awesome. And he's his job is to free Krakoa. Okay, cool. Like the, the planet the, or like the the, the island, the, the guy, the man island. Yes. Um, but he's a little extra help. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, so Black Tom Cassidy arrives. No, and he's like, come on, boyo. I know, no, no, no. Unfortunately, uh, I'll spot you. Emma is supposed to help him, but she she can't. Um, and so Rogue and Gambit are meant to fly in and and help out. Okay, as they're doing that. Um, Gambit's like, hey, Rogue, now might be the time for you to tell me or to like uh, use that secret that Destiny definitely didn't want you to tell me. Ah. But clearly, you're going to. Oh, had. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, if you didn't read that Rogue and Gambit book that came out recently, mm -hmm. um, you don't know that. Rogan Gambit went on an adventure that was spurred on by Destiny, which seemed to be leading potentially to their breakup, but didn't. But didn't, yay. But didn't. They just ended up on different teams, but did not end in their breakup, even though we were going that we were route. Really we didn't. That. Um, and it took Manifold off the table mm. because Destiny was like, we need him to be alive. Right. And so at the end of the day, they ended up putting him into like a stasis pod in uh -huh. a no place. Ah. Uh, so no one knew where he was. And it's like he existed outside of time. Cool. But he didn't know. No. Yeah. And so they're going to have to go get him. Okay. Okay. Um, and when he wakes up, he's like, screw you both. Like, Rogue, you're better than this. You're yeah, on yeah. the X-Men. You're an X-Man. What? It's like in Gambit, you know, he's, mm -hmm. you're, you're, hmm. um, but then he realizes like, as he's like punching Rogue, mm -hmm. like her face starts to crack and it's like Destiny's face underneath. And I'm like, but that's not right. Yeah. And he's like, what is happening? And then he's like, oh, wait, it's Laktuka from Arako. Oh. Um, who's like, you're dreaming. Mm. And you need to understand that like there was someone else, they're speaking of Destiny, who like doesn't necessarily have the whole picture like some of us do, <laughs> but was trying to do the right thing. And you need, and he's like, I got it. Mm -hmm. Get it. Right. You don't have to drag it out. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm I all right. I understand why they did what they did. And then like they, we cut back to the original like the other scene where it's like Rogue and Gambit looking at him being like, Hey, are hey. you awake? Yeah. And like Gambit's like, like, Okay, you, I'm in Are you listening to me? Right. And she's like, Does anybody? Right. Oh. <laughs> so Manifold's like, I'm in. Mm -hmm. We gotta go. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, Manifold is now on the table. Yay. Which I was like, that's interesting. I wonder if they're going to use him in order to access the white the, hot room. I was going to say the rest of the of the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like on your left. Yeah, kinda, yeah. Kinda oh, that'd action. be a kind of a good moment. I don't know, right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and and so oh, additionally, Modok is is exiting. It's not a big deal. Okay. But Modok is is exiting Orcus. Yeah, it makes sense. At the end, he uh, is a, a an info dump page. It's his letter of resignation to Orcus. He's like, "Hey, we had some good times, didn't we? Yeah. We we built. But some, I didn't really, I didn't really hate mutants, so I don't really. We built some big robots. We killed a bunch of people, and we had we had fun. And that's what we should take away from this. Right. We had fun, and we were successful. But at this time, I realized that I think my murderous spree would be better served as a solo show. Yes. So I'm gonna go. Right. Um, but I might be like calling on some of you. He's like, we really should have probably brought arcade into this. That probably would have worked out <laughs> better for us. Yeah, probably. I'm just saying. Um, so like, in, world. The, in the future, you should probably, you know, think about calling him, but I am working on some stuff. And so you might be hear hearing from me in the future. Okay. Like, all right. And I was like, are if we you setting wanted... up something that like 
is planned for the like maybe the next like arm or the next leg of the like mutant x-men journey post krakoa like is there gonna be a modok thing i don't know i don't know but like i was like okay sure so yeah. modok is, is is gone he's out he's yep. good and i was like you know i really was not out of everyone i wasn't worried <laughs> out of every arm of orcas modok was really not high on my priority list of things that were going to go wrong for the x-men yeah he knows that uh, yeah right he's like okay well i should probably just leave now because no one's gonna even notice i was gone yeah um so here is like the big thing that like there's a couple of big things you need to take away from this a stasis is headed to earth and like um emma's gonna try to keep tabs on him so that they can get him mm -hmm. right manifold is back on the table mm -hmm. and number three cyclops is going to be um, executed executed by the omega sentinel who was like we shouldn't have ever even had a trial but hey whatever here we go uh -huh. and he's like here's the thing um there's a specific woman who is not gonna let that happen and you're like gene emma right it, his daughter right <laughs> like okay i was like psylocke right moira what <laughs> and no it's uh dr gregor oh remember her from yeah. the beginning yeah of all she of hates this. him because she, cause her she husband's hates dead. him but when he mentioned the fact that it was like clearly mm -hmm. the omega sentinel and nimrod are have using other her. plans mm -hmm. she was like mm. and so she utilizes uh an emp in order to take down the omega sentinel she's like she's going to reboot i can only do this one time she's like i recognize now yep that like orcas has a bit of a dark spot oh does it and it's like a nimrod shape <laughs> yeah and uh yeah we need to work together okay and so now i'm i'm definitely starting to wonder if moira isn't bad if moira was like this is this is how this it has to go this is how it has to go yeah like orcas has to exist and exact bloody revenge like, in order for it to like be it, like, it has to be that i became like robotic so that i could be trusted by nimrod so that i could bring peace to humans and mutants because they have a common enemy. yeah i kind of like that yeah and i know that's where we're really gonna go and i just i think it's more like i have this you just this, want more to be this, fixed this little hope shaped like hole in my heart where i'm like maybe yeah. it's, it's yeah, gonna cold, be that freaking cold inferno sucks <laughs> um but yeah so she mentioned sentinel city okay and uh you know we we got a lot we got a we got a road ahead of us because i i think this is a fall has of x two of five yeah um so we do have a, a journey ahead right of we're, us. and it feels like we're kind of wrapping up so it doesn't not. it doesn't like i i like i appreciate this because this was like we have a uh we've got several mountains here of issues mm -hmm. and uh yeah we get we're addressing some of them and taking some things off of the table that maybe aren't as important to the end story so sure or like i think we're starting to like like get rid of some of these threads okay great well uh i read batman 143 obviously uh part two i believe of the of, of joker year one sure um as I recall, uh, I was a little harsh about this book. You were, uh, you I, were I was, very harsh. It was hard Not to, very, but you were harsh. Yeah, it was hard sure. to follow, and it was hard to act on myself. Uh, written by Zip, Chip Zdarsky with art by Giuseppe Camincoli mm -hmm. and Andrea Sorrentino. There's two storylines. So there's uh, there, there's um, there's two timelines that we're looking at right now in this three part story. Okay. The first of which is zero is post zero year, where the Joker has done his like stint as the leader of the Red Hood gang okay. and then falls in the vat of acid and becomes the Joker. Right, right, right. That is that is where we are with that timeline. Okay. Um, he is then met by a character Chip Zdarsky created in a book called Batman the Knight, who was one of Batman's many trainers who helped him develop the Zuranar personality. This guy. So he's a he's a fan favorite. He's a fan favorite of the person who created him, and so he shows up on the riverbank with the Joker when he like emerges from you know the Ace Chemicals and says, "I can make you the perfect complement to my greatest mistake, Batman, if you'll just come with me." And so he trains Joker to be not afraid of Batman, and develop multiple personalities that uh, allow him to mask his fear or reconfigure it in a way that helps him more be more effective against batman he does that by creating three jokers okay so wait, are we saying this definitely happened this we're is, saying this, this officially happened this officially happened yeah okay so joker Not a fan no okay uh so Personal opinion. joker joker uh 
I think the and and of course like multi te, multiversally we're saying that like the Batman adventure he had with Red Mask created three Jokers, but in this one no. In story, in in the plot, Joker develops three personalities that okay. he uses. Okay, and those three personalities are the three Jokers that Metron. Uh, or the the Mobius chair is referring to in Justice uh, League from like 25 years ago. Right, 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 right. So uh, Three Jokers is not canon. Uh, it never was and it never will sure, be. Sure, uh, sure, sure, But instead, when uh, the Mobius chair said there are three Jokers, what he meant was there's one guy who has three personalities and those three Jokers uh, all have different identities and those three Jokers all like that. That allows for one Joker body to do three different Joker type stories like mm. the Killing Joke or Endgame, uh, you know, or any other normal Joker story. So the three Jokers are three Joker personalities. Okay. Not unlike Zuranar. Sure. So it's okay. all the same person. Same physical guy. Yeah. Trained by a former trainer of Batman who developed essentially three Jokers. The three Jokers are kind of like Joker Zuranar. There's another plot line going on that Aaron Drew Sorrentino uh, drew in which. Um, Gotham is overrun with a Joker virus. Everyone's Jokers. It's spread through. It's spread through laughter, which I think Scott Snyder did. Um, but uh, it's kind of like more apocalyptic, and everyone's a little older. Mm -hmm. you, can, you take that if you want. Um, but uh, Batman is doing his thing. He's trying to uh, stave off this this virus, this attack. He ends up bumping into the Joker himself. The Joker uh, leads him down a merry chase uh, to uh, the police precinct where he runs into Catwoman. Catwoman uh, accepts, uh, or, or Catwoman is like Batman in that she blocked out the like auditory virus that causes the Jokerisms, but Joker then shows up and then takes it out of her. So now she is part of the uh, problem. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then she's unleashed along with the Bat family to attack Batman as Jokerized versions of themselves. Oh no. And so then the, the story wraps up with Joker kind of like exacting bloody revenge against the only guy who might know how to stop Joker and who uh, knows Batman's greatest uh, secret. And so we get that. Uh, I, I have to admit, um, this issue was a lot more easy to follow. It was a lot more comprehensive. Uh, knowing that it was also like a kind of sequel to Batman the Night helped me like acclimate myself uh, certainly uh, much more than the first issue did. Um, I really appreciated slash enjoyed the Jim Gordon story. I thought that, uh, you know, it's, I always love a good Jim Gordon story. You know, Jim's one of my favorite freaking Batman's uh, characters, but, um, but, but seeing Jim kind of like during that heyday when he's not commissioner, he's dealing with corrupt police department. The fact that the Joker gang has infiltrated the GCPD, how they like get rid of a potential witness and all this stuff is really, really cool. Um, seeing him, of course, work with Batman more directly and having Batman be like, come on, buddy, let's go. is always a, 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 a crowd pleaser for me. It's a fan favorite for me. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, so there's a lot to like. I will say about Batman 143. There's a lot to like about this story um, that I was more reticent uh, to accept in the previous issue. And I got to tell you, the part of the reason is because like, that's what it's like to review comic books week to week. It's like you get one issue, you have all the con you have, you have all the context or none of the context for it. And so you judge it based on what you have and what you're looking at. And then you get the next issue and it kind of recontextualizes everything, deepens it, widens it and adds more to it. So it's, it's why I think it is important. And I know uh, I've had this kind of discussion with uh, numerous comic book aficionados where it's like, you give it, you, I, I, I normally one to give a, a book pretty much one issue before I'm like, nah, because books are expensive. Um, back in the day when books were like a buck or even two bucks, or three bucks uh it was a little easier to kind of go well, i'll give it three or four issues but i know a lot of folk who are like i'm gonna give a book three to five issues before i decide whether or not i like it and i'm i'm not quite on that like train yet but i will say that i feel like i'm i'm, I'm softening on that a little bit more because i'm like you know i did need another issue to kind of like understand where chip was going with this and i i i, I genuinely do uh, like a lot of it. The question, of course, is Joker origins and whether they are ever satisfying. And I think when you accept that no Joker origin is satisfying and when you accept that like they're going, when you accept the inevitability of Joker's popularity and the fact that they are never not going to do that, your choices are either to skip it, accept it, 
or ignore it, you know, or or treat it like it's an Elseworlds. Uh, when it comes to Joker's origins, I'm typically one that, to, to say that none of it is canon outside of like very, very like small glimmers. You know, I like Killing Joke. I know that that's not necessarily a popular thing to say anymore, but like I like Killing Joke. I think it's a well-crafted story. I know even Alan Moore has said he doesn't really care for it, but um, I like the, the the way it's constructed and how it more is about flashbacks that inform the character in the present. And the flashbacks we get are very few and far between. We don't get a lot uh, of context for Joker, and that's what speaks volumes and gives the character depth and and and, and makes me care. Um, I also like that there's the one. You know, you have one book. You're like, that's Joker's origin, or maybe it could be, maybe not. Maybe it tells you some glimmer of Joker's origin, but not enough for you to get a fully fledged or idea. And that's why I liked it, where it was like, it was that book over there, and you could either ignore it. Or you could accept it, but it wasn't like there's like 17 Joker stories. Um, but all that to say, when you're reading this issue, it's like, ah, another origin for the Joker. This one explains the three Jokers. This one gives you an explanation of, of, of the zero year Joker and how he develops into the Jokers that you know him to be. The fact that it is set in zero year helps me in a big bad way because I'm thinking to myself like, I don't even really regard zero year as in canon anyway. So like, sure. You know, if this were the new 52 or if this were rebirth where we needed to explain how the new 52 factored into the overall continuity, because like five or 10 years was stolen from us by Dr. Manhattan, like during that period, this would make a lot more sense because it's like, Oh, it gives you more context. It gives you more character and depth and development that bridges the gaps between what was, which is like post crisis and what is in the like new 52 or post new 52 or the rebirth period. But we're past both those at this point. We're at Dawn of DC, which is, you know, one death metal and a dark crisis later. So as, as far as I think most of the folks who work there are concerned, this is the post crisis DC universe made manifest again um, with a few like, you know, tweaks and, 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 and changes, but setting it in this kind of like, did zero year happen or not? I guess it did. Here's how we explain it. And also it justifies that this Snyder Joker that was invented for zero year or rather represents the Joker of the, of the new 52 can become the Jokers from all the continuities or all the continuities from like, let's say 1976 until the present. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I think it works. I think it works well enough if you need to tell a Joker origin story, which I'm not convinced you do, but I also find that you are in a place where like y every writer does a Joker at some point in the, in the modern era, like from 2011 onward, every writer has got to do their big Joker story. And I think that's also uh, evident in the flash forward story, which features like a more apocalyptic, emaciated, uh, possibly dying, uh, you know, last hurrah Joker, um, which I think that helps also to cement it into a kind of like Elseworldsian kind of vibe um, where I'm like, I, I, I feel fewer. I, I only feel the stakes that are associated with the story itself. I don't feel the like overall Batman mystery, Batman universe stakes where I'm like, you're changing everything about Batman. And, uh, and, 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 and why? No, this is more like it, it's part of the Batman story. Like it's just part of this Batman story. So I, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I, I also, uh, really enjoy the depiction of Catwoman in this, or at least the Andrea Sorrentino, uh, Catwoman. But, uh, we'll talk more about that when, when, when Tiffany returns. Everything okay? Yes. I <laughs> Just not comic book related. I placed an order for us to have some healthy salads delivered to our house. And I just got a call from the driver who was like, did you get a notification about them changing the driver up? Now I ordered it through their site, not through DoorDash or GrubHub. Right, Hub, through the through them, company um, that which makes we've the done salads. Yeah. Not a problem. And so like it started to unfold that like they were like, yeah, but I talked to her. I talked to Tiffany before. Uh, and I asked her about a substitution for something. I called her and I was like, no, they didn't. Uh, I can tell you right now, there is evidence I did not get a call. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
No, wow. I didn't get a chance to say it, but I wasn't like, I'm doing a live stream right now. Yeah, I don't have time <laughs> like, for this. this but also, happen. wow, fraud. 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 And someone picked it up. What? And they didn't check. Like the people at the store didn't check the way they were supposed to. So this guy was trying to figure it out. And I was like, I feel so bad for this driver. Like, right. Who has just inherited like, this problem. This, this, this guy went out of his way, first of all. So I need to figure out how to like give I, him a better tip. I need tip. to give him a better tip. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do get that. Get his but, digits and we'll send him a Venmo. Right. Like I need to do that a hundred percent because like, dude, like it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So anyway, <laughs> there's three too many. <laughs> salads guys yeah speaking of salads i i produced quite the word salad for everybody about I the heard batman a book bit of that. but uh but the andrea Ooh, sorrentino art right oh that is just black cat yeah 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 but like it's, it's <laughs> catwoman in the future so she's a little older but she's sure. like really beautiful i, wow, I loved it she's stunning i know i know but uh so you know the, the chemicoli art is a chemicoli i like chemicoli art I, i'm glad you like it i'm glad somebody does i i i appreciate it I don't like his faces, and I've said that a million times. I like it. I don't know if it's a good fit for a Batman book, but I do. I like it. It it it's more a fit for Batman than Spider Man. Look at that. What's your opinion? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's my show. What? <laughs> it's our show. Yeah. Well, I get to have big opinions on it, but uh, <laughs> like, okay. Well, so if this is your show, then those are my salads. Well, uh, fine. Will you share one with me, <laughs> please? But uh, yeah, so. The Andrea Sorrentino art, obviously, it's very different. It's much more, like, gritty and realistic. It's like, yeah. But people are accusing it of being AI. And the reason why they're saying that is more or less because there's an image in it that looks uh, like a lot like Ben Affleck's Batman. And that they're saying it's like a still from, like, one of the Batman movies. Like, oh. Batman vs. Superman or something like that. Sure. I mean, there is a difference, a big effing difference, uh -huh. a big screaming difference between an artist using reference, yep. which I know Adrian Sorrentino does. Oh, yeah. To typing in the computer yeah. to like whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, this is this is dangerous, guys. Be careful with this one, right? Because right, like, like, don't call something AI when it's just using so, reference. So there's a couple of things here. One, a they can use reference. Uh, two, then of course there are people who just draw over things, like doing some draw. Over yes, art. There, there's um, like there's and, a recent Star Wars book where it's like you just you didn't even draw over it. Right, you right. took a, a frame from the movie, you went to Photoshop, put apply filter. Yeah, and you just made it look more like it was drawn but i i heavily suspect you didn't draw it right 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 uh and then there's also art um that is created with machine learning right which i'm like trying to like oh more... use instead of saying ai yeah yeah machine learning is much more uh of a diplomatic response no it's more correct yeah if it was artificially intelligent then eventually it, it would, have it would its do it itself objective nature and it wouldn't need us mm -hmm. but it is just machine learning yes um anyway um and that is very different. I don't know enough about Andrea Sorrentino's art process. Right. Um, I've never actually seen their process, but, but, I, but I know their art. I I've seen it a million times. I feel like that's probably reference you're seeing. And so even if they were using a still from a movie, it might end up looking like Ben Affleck. Because right. Because like, they're a talented artist who knows how to depict like what they're seeing. Well, like also they're like, well, I saw it. I see the, the, the shape of the jaw this way. And then, and yeah. so I'm going to draw it that way. There yeah. you go. Like, and I've seen, um, I've seen reference or, moments key moments art swipes yeah where it's an art swipe where they they did they took a pose from another comic mm -hmm. maybe from themselves or from another artist and it doesn't match with what they're doing right. you know in the process this is a consistent batman throughout this book it's yeah. not like it's like oh in that one panel it looks a lot like ben affleck and then the rest of it looks like andrea sorrentino like drew the batman like it looks like it, it does look a lot like um ben affleck's batman like it, it in terms of the jaw and stuff yeah but it doesn't it, it if i had never heard anything about it i would never have thought anything of it right um but uh but there's i, I think it's a you know as much as the slippery slope when it comes to like machine learning i think it's a slippery slope to make those kinds of sweeping judgments and accusations about that especially if like you know if especially if you don't know like the process or the options available to the artist right like where it's like i i, I guarantee you okay mike dadato jr when he was drawing spider-man back during the J. michael straczynski era mm -hmm. creator of babylon mm -hmm. five uh Tommy Lee Jones was clearly his reference point for 
Norman Osborn. Right. And it always was. In fact, during Dark Reign, they right. were like, oh, we'll get to the other junior. And suddenly Tommy Lee Jones was back as Norman Osborn. And it just, it was Tommy Lee Jones. He was drawing Tommy Lee Jones. And in fact, Jason Priestley was Peter Parker. Liv Tyler was Mary Jane. Uh, Robert De Niro played the, the director for one episode or one issue. He was using reference. Uh -huh. it, and there, it was undeniable. Right, 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 right. To the point where it's like, oh, you cast this comic book. And sure, it it moves things along. It makes things faster. I don't need to like think of a face. I could just see it and approximate it. Right. But I promise you, if that book had come out like yesterday, people have been like, oh, uh, he's 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 using AI to make Tommy Lee, to Tommy Lee Jones O face and made uh, since past. Like, I, but no, it's it, 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 there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And back then, people knew, and now people don't. You know, and it's just like, you know, before you make these kinds of sweeping op uh, generalizations, you got to know what the what the options are available to the to, mm -hmm. to the artists and to and in the industry where it's mm -hmm. like there's a, there, there are terms for them. swipes or references or, you know, Photoshop jobs or or or, or AI. And right. like, yes. And, like, and that part. And here's the thing with AI slash machine learning art, um, art, machine learning, period. Um, But like there there is like you do need to we need to pay attention to that and, yeah. and and that's not to say like you know don't you know yeah keep oh, an no. eye remember out when it. wacom used a used machine learning to like yeah as a as a promotional campaign for themselves for a freaking tablet to sell to artists right and they were like oh yeah no one will notice and then you mean but it's because you were like oh there's you're training your brain to be like i can recognize like the, the yeah and the, that, the hallmarks and you, that and you should because um you know it's not Everyone keeps saying it's not going anywhere, right? But like, it's not that it's not going anywhere. It's more that people are going to start using it in in shittier ways. Yeah. Um. And and the fact is, there's there's no um there's really no legislation or anything like that on um the ownership of that type of thing. Yes. Or or you know creative rights on that sort of thing. And um. Yeah. It's just there's just a lot to it, and we're not going to get into it here. No, uh, no, because somebody on Twitter was like, there was a uh, there's a machine learning mm -hmm. um, uh, person, mm -hmm. prolific machine learning create uh, producer, let's say producer, uh, who produces images using machine learning. Mm -hmm. That's the best way I could describe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who was very nonplussed about the fact that their machine learned production was being used without credit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm he sorry. was he was That's very right. cross. Was very he was like very this. cross about the concept that he was not being given credit for having uh, typed in the words, and he and he went out of his way to say like, you know, I know the search terms necessary in order to produce that 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 production, and so. It, it that's yes, yes. Admittedly, it did draw from sources that did not give their permission or their consent to have their arts sampled, but it's an original creation made by me and my search terms. And so I should be given credit. Not that I should give credit to the artists whose work was used and manipulated to make it. And it's like, so that, and, and that is the thing we're fighting. That That is, then when I say fighting, I mean like what? making fun of, that because that is the problem. The problem is this like good for the goose, good for the gander hypocrisy of like, I, I don't, like I don't respect it. I don't care about art. I don't feel like it. Like the creative process is worth giving you know credit until it happens to me, and then suddenly it's a problem. That's like an arsonist being upset that someone set his house on fire. I know exactly. Like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was just, but that's that's like it's why it's important to like call it out and bring it up. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And and and, and but give to credit not to artists. Create like a witch hunt. Right. Because that's the problem, right? Because yeah. it's like when you do that, you dilute the actual issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so it yeah, it's got yeah, keep an eye out for it, but you know, do do some some looking into it if you yeah. want to make a like a like a like a statement about it. Exactly, exactly. But anyway, uh as far as the issue goes, it was much better than the previous. Okay. Um I'm I'm more on board than I was before. Okay. Um and it's like just accepting the inevitability that like everyone's going to do a Joker story mm. and you know, then I, and, and I think that the best Joker stories are behind us because I think the Joker's oversaturation and the fact that like what sells is 
being told information instead of being given a story. And uh, as a result, we're, you know, not, not that like Chip isn't telling a story. It's mm -hmm. more like what sells is the origin of the Joker, not here's a really baller story about the Joker, right? It's yeah. only three issues. Yeah. That's my problem. Is it like, but, but living in this world where it's like, this is the world we live in. Every, every, uh, every writer is going to have a, a, a thing, a, a big Joker story. So I guess, you know, get used to it. And uh, so, cool. you know. Okay, I guess I will. Or what's your what's your issue of the week? Uh man, there's a lot of really good books. Um, I I uh, I think I have to give it to Batman and Robin number six because of how like cute it was, and how mm. if you want a Batman who isn't like a humorless douche, you're gonna find it in that issue. It's just a really like well uh, produced thing. It's a fun little story, and it's it's a it's a version of Batman that I could very much see. Um, in like a you know. It, it, I could see this being the dominant Batman okay. um, in another in another world. Okay. Um, oh, I should have read Action Comics. Jason Aaron is is writing Action Comics, and I didn't even know it. Oh, whoa. Um, I want to give it to Fall of X, but I think I'm going to give it to Moon Knight. I was really Ooh. like, I love both issues, um, but I just love how they're framing this series. Yeah, I I, I just love McKay's framing of it. You yep. know, just. Yeah, I think yeah, I have to give it to that. That's sure. fair. Uh, jumping into the Super Chats before we give our recommendations. So those are our books of the week, by the way, everybody. Yeah. Uh, Mason Guerra says, uh, will you ever cover Kennedy Johnson Superman? Probably. A war world is an inevitability, I'm sure, if the, as long as the channel survives and the, the, the hosts remain. You know, we're gonna. I'm not going to run out of books. So, yeah. Uh, I think I didn't do this one. Mendel Green, uh, first time in a long time. Catch you guys live and wanted to say thanks for your thoughts and insights and keep up the great work. Thanks, well, thank Mendel. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Paul Williams, out of curiosity, will we see more Krakoa X-Men on back issues in the future? I'd say definitely. Yes. Uh, Supreme Omega, hey, Tiffany. Uh, hey, Sal. Hope Hi. you're well. Uh, you. How do you separate a good retcon from a bad retcon? Because retcons are a divisive thing, especially when it's overused. Absolutely. Uh, I think the, the, the question is intent. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, a perfect, it's a healthy mixture. It's always a composite. It's a chemical compound. All right. It's not just like do this thing, do this equation and you will mm -hmm. get a good retcon. It's like, it's intent, it's execution, mm -hmm. it's history. Yep. Because if a retcon seeks to change the history, then you better know the history. Yeah. And if you know it, you'll be, you do a better job of retconning it. Yep. If it flows better, if you know, and if you know the history and you're changing the history, that should feel more like you're deepening the history than you're changing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, if it feels more like an aha than an oh man, you know, if it's like, oh wow, that actually informs what be, what what happened instead of oh that changes what happened. Right. You know, right, it right. deepens the history instead of just altering it. Right. You know, it's why like one more day is a crap, or actually omit is one of the worst retcons because it just outright changes it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus like a uh, Bucky is Winter Soldier change. Right. 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 I think it's also a, a healthy dose of subjective versus objective. Absolutely. And then there's just about what you like yeah, versus what you, what like, you don't. For sure. Uh, RK, uh, I wonder what Jim Lee thinks when he gets his royalty check for the new X-Men season as Zazzleth throws another animated DC project in the IRS shredder. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I, I I don't know if Jim Lee's paid anything mm. for his X-Men stuff. Interesting. Um, but I can imagine that if the rumors were true that Jim Lee was going to go to Marvel and do X-Men, it would have been a big check. Uh, Panda go crazy. Uh, Comic Papa always gets paid. <laughs> Thank you very much. Been recently catching up on Spider Versity. Love hearing from you and DJ. Thanks, nice. man. You like it? Uh, go to Only Stupid Answers. It's a fun show. Uh, Danby nine hundred. I really like the future story in Joker Year One, but I'll admit the art is so good that I just want more of it. It's incredible, along with the coloring. The Year One story being the sequel in the to the origin in Killing Joke, the Night and Zero Year, along with the prequel to the winning card with the suit at the end, feels like too much. I wish it was referenced less. You know. I hear what you're saying and I completely agree. I think that it's more like, I think that as far as chips approaching it, it's like, look at what, how it would have accomplished. Mm -hmm. I now, you now have a comprehensive reading guide to the origin of the Joker. If you read these books in a row, you're going to get a complete story, which, you know, I, I appreciate that at least they reference the winning card. I'm yeah. Like, well, that's kind of cool, but I do, I do appreciate that it is kind of a lot. Uh, Samuel Summers, I'm just here to send the money. Thank Listen, you. Sam, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I'm just here to take it. So thank you very much. Let's uh, do some wrecks because our talents are almost. <laughs> yes. Uh, Batman 144, the end of the Joker, uh, year one story. Hey. Uh, more Jim Gordon. Uh, that's the other thing is that you get a lot of Jim Gordon. Yay, Jim. Story, so that's great. I love Jim. Uh, Nightwing 111, uh, one of the last issues of uh, Tom Taylor's Nightwing, this time with art by Sammy Baz uh, Basri. 
Nice. So check that out. Okay. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number two is <gasps> returning. Yes. Only a couple of days. Jonathan Hickman, Marco Cicchetto. I can't wait. Hooray. That sounds great. Hooray. Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest 24. One of the best DC books out there right now. Mark Way, Dan Moore of Batman Superman. What else could you ask for more? Oh, how about Kingdom Come? Check it out. Uh, Superman 11 from Joshua Williamson. And of course, David Baldeon. Uh, it's great. It's a really fun story. I like it. It's a. It's the most quintessentially Superman feeling Superman books out there. Uh, Wonder Woman number six. Yeah. Tom King, Daniel Samper. If you have not read any Wonder Woman books lately, you need to be looking at these books at the very least for Samper's art. Yeah. 100%. I know a lot of folks are not on board for Tom 100%. King's decisions for Wonder Woman. I couldn't care less. I'm down. Yeah. But the Samper art is worth it, even if you hate what they're saying or doing. Uh, uh, Cobra Commander number two is returning. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Joshua Williamson, Andrea Milana, and Animal Pound number two, Tom King and Peter Gross. I have finally gotten a copy of Animal Town number one so I'll be able to read the rest of this effing series not, not uh, also Alien Black White and Blood is coming out from Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing with art by uh, with yeah. uh, just it's also a whole bunch of people because it's Ryan it's, Katie Stephanie Phillips Clayton uh, yeah etc it's a whole bunch of people because it's a red white and blood uh, yeah, black, yeah, white, and black blood. white and blood book so it's you know it's a little vignettes can't wait I uh, you know I'm, I'm a sucker for the Alien series I've been very unhappy with it so far but there's a completely different team here we go uh, James Bond 007 number two from Garth Ennis and Raf, uh, Rafa Labasco. Um, I read the first issue and I was like, all right, I'll read more of this. So we'll see how it goes. Wow. Um, and there's more because Tiffany also has her own recommendations to attend to. I do. Uh, unfortunately, I closed the uh, You the, the sure tab. did. That's fine. I got this. Uh, X-Force number 49. Yeah, Beast. Right, so more Beast. Go. Are you going to read Daredevil number six? Solid in Ahmed. That's not fair. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know. We'll see. Just because Doctor Strange is on the cover doesn't mean I should read it. No, but it is, that is why he put his, they put him on the cover. But God's number five. That has Doctor Strange and you're reading it. Yeah, 100%. Definitely reading that. Rise of the Powers of X number two. Sweet. We're doing the, you know, don't forget. It's like this and that. It's powers, it's house, it's mm -hmm. fall and it's rise. I, I love it. Yep, yep. I, I am absolutely here for it. Uh, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong, number five. Yeah. I like that book. John Constantine Hellblazer, Dead in America, number two. It's a big week for me. This Very is your thrilled. book of the week. We can already tell before uh, yeah, it even comes out. Yeah, it's Cy Spurrier and Aaron Campbell. I freaking love this book. And I know I'm going to love this issue. I don't. I haven't even read it. Mm -mm. I just. I just want to. Also, if you're uh, reading Luke Cage, Luke Cage Gang War number four is coming out. Um, I'm sure there's like a million other things. Oh, you're gonna read this? No. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted nope, nope. to ask. Marvel's Predator has left me in the cold. Ooh. Okay. Big time. Okay. They don't uh, like except the... for one, uh, where he fought. But they don't Wolverine. like that. No, they don't like they, the cold. They don't like the cold. They don't like the. They like the heat. Ooh, the, yeah. the steamy heat. That's right. Oh, cool. If you're a Dan Waters fan, he's got another um, book coming out from Image. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to pick this up in floppies or in individuals, but mm. I want to give you a shout out or give you guys a heads up. If you're a Dan Waters fan, uh, Six Fingers, number one, will be coming out from Image Comics. Sweet. That's what I got. But uh, listen, if you want to watch Tiffany play video games, you can always do I, so I by watching. I feel watching... so bad. We have not streamed in a minute. No, it's true. It was a, we've, we've, we've had a... There's been a lot. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes. And uh, as a result, we've needed uh, to, you know, pick up the slack. Yeah. So uh, we do apologize. But uh, Tiffany is playing Bioshock uh, in, turn, in the reruns over on YouTube.com at Comic Pop Plays. Uh, yeah. That series is going to continue for the next uh, couple of days, and then we will have another uh, set of streams. But, uh, of course, if you want to watch more of that, twitch.tv slash comic pop. And uh, if you want more, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks to our Super Chatters for sponsoring today's show, and thanks to the chat for keeping it cool and being sweet. And we'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. <laughs> I'm Tiffany. So long, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.